Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a proposal of how asset libraries can work in Blender 2.83 and beyond. Now, I've spent a good amount of time working with and developing different asset systems in Blender. So I wanted to share some of the concepts and prototypes I've been working on in an effort to hopefully help speed up the development of the asset engine and make it as powerful as it possibly can be. Now, everything that I'm going to show is currently working in a custom build of Blender 2.83. It includes a basic mock-up of how the asset management interface could look. It includes the ability to drag and drop assets into the 3D viewport and intuitive placement functionality. Now, my current implementation is very simple and still needs quite a bit of development, but I wanted to show it in this early stage because it might help the core development team as it is. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. So here, obviously, I have the asset library docked to the left-hand side. This is going to be a standard space, just like any other space in Blender to where you can split your interface and configure it wherever you want it to be. But for me, I've got it on my left-hand side. And you'll also notice here in the panel on the left, I've got a very simple setup to where here, these are just a few of the different libraries that are currently available. And here I can just toggle between them. Now the official implementation, there will probably be a lot more panels available, but this gives you a good idea of how the system could work here. And I like to just configure this to where the panel is shrunk down to where I can just see the icons to give me just more room to browse the assets. And so here I have the object library selected and you'll notice that here we've got different categories that are available. And so here I can just select through these different categories to see what assets are available. And there will most likely be a different way to browse the assets. I assume that there's gonna be some sort of a tagging system or again, have some sort of a way of just typing in to filter out the information that you're seeing just to provide you as much flexibility as possible when it comes to finding the asset that you're looking for. But when you find the asset here, you can just take this asset, drag it into the scene, and you'll notice that you're also put in this placement mode. So you can determine exactly where you want this positioned. And so here I can just left click and that will place my asset. And then here I can always rotate it or change anything about it that I need to. Now the collection library is gonna work very similar to where you know I've got the same sort of categories here that I can browse between here if I go to furniture I can see all the different assets and if you have a lot of assets of course you can always change you know how much previews are being displayed to you and when you want to add an asset here let's go and take this side table I can drag it in and of course it's just going to automatically position that and so here if we wanted to place a few more let's go ahead and maybe add some decoration objects maybe we'll include this vase. And you'll notice too that these assets are you know snapping to any mesh object and so it just provides you a nice easy way to position that exactly where you want it. And let's say maybe we'll add these vases as well. And since these are collection objects here if I just place this in the scene you'll also notice that it targets or automatically selects the objects that are the base point. And so here, if I right click, I can rotate this collection, even though there's several different objects included. Once I position that object, it's already put me in a mode that will allow me to easily kind of fine tune its placement. And here, let's also go ahead and just switch to material mode. Because in order to demonstrate the material library, here, let's go ahead and just add in an object. I'm just gonna add in a plane, maybe scale this up a bit. And here, I'm just gonna go ahead and extend these faces to create some walls really quick. And so now if I want to assign a material to this object, here let's go ahead and just select a wood floor object. We'll just drag this into the scene. And again, we're just going to left click on our mesh and you can see that it's just assigned that material directly to that object. But in a lot of cases, you'll have material slots or multiple material slots assigned to one object. And so here, if we go into these selected objects and just create another material slot and maybe in edit mode here I'm just going to select these two faces and assign them to that second material slot and so now let's say we want to let's add this wall paint color here you'll notice that since there's multiple material slots the asset library is asking you know what slot do you want to assign this to and so here we can assign it to the second slot which does you know exactly what we'd expect it to do and then finally the world library is very simple to where here, let's go and switch into rendered view really quick. And let's just drag in this environment. And you'll see that's gonna automatically add the HDR image as the environment. And maybe just for fun, let's just add in a quick sunlight here. And 
And so as you can see, using an asset library allows you a much quicker process when it comes to just laying out the scene, you know, populating it with objects, things like that. And all of this is pretty basic stuff. I'm sure that the core development team will create something that includes all this functionality, plus it'll probably be way better. But the functionality that excites me the most is the idea of creating custom parametric libraries. And these are libraries that are created by a developer. And they not only control how the assets are displayed in the library, but also how the asset is placed and how the user interacts with the asset once it's placed in the scene, providing a very quick and easy way to create specific types of scenes. Now, this is still in very early development stages, but I want to give you a quick demonstration of what I mean. So here, that's this top library here, this scripted library. And so once we select it, we have the ability to see all the different libraries that I currently have installed. And the idea here is that these would be installed just like an add-on is installed to where once you enable it, you'll have just more options. And so here, if I select the Room Builder library, you can see that this library has several different categories included. And here in the Walls category, we just have a couple walls that we can use. But one thing that I want to point out here is that once we drag this asset into the library, you can see that we can determine a starting point. But once we left click, we can see that it's going to start drawing this asset out. And so here, we'll go ahead and position you know, our cursor and just add in a few different walls. Go ahead and position this. And so you can see that this asset is not just a mesh object, but there's functionality included to allow the user to determine exactly how this asset is going to be created. It's kind of a custom asset that you're creating depending on the placement functionality. And not only that, but now that these assets are in the scene, you can see that I can select each wall segment independently. And so here, if I click on one of these, and then right click, we get not only the standard context menu that Blender already has, but we have access to wall prompts. And these are all the custom properties that the developer gives you access to. And you can see that if I change the length of these walls, it's going to automatically adjust all the other walls. We can change the rotation and things like that. And for the final version, there will probably be a lot more options and things like that that are included. But again, all these libraries are parametric to where you not only have an intuitive placement option, but also you can work with these objects and change their behavior in the scene. And so here also, let's say we wanted to place a door, we can drag this into the scene, and you can see that it's gonna automatically snap to the walls that we've created. And then as we left click, you can see that we can you know, place different openings in this wall. And again, we can escape to get out of that command. And of course, too, since these were all placed with the Room Builder library, if we went back and wanted to change the wall properties, you can see that all of the objects that are associated to that wall are going to move along with it, making it very easy for you to customize your room afterwards. So these libraries would not only include a, you know, kind of custom placement option and a custom way of interacting with these objects, but the library itself will also have kind of a custom interface that you can use to change different things about how the library behaves. And so here, like we have a settings page where you can adjust the default wall height and thickness. And of course, there will be a lot more options from changing the you know, default size of the doors. There also may be certain tools that this library offers to maybe automatically and quickly add base or crown molding to the rooms that you've created, have an automated way of generating lights. There's all sorts of different concepts and things that you can include. But the idea is that you have a custom way of placing them, a custom way of interacting with them after their place, and then also just a general interface to modify anything about how this library behaves. Now, one last thing that I want to show here is that I'm going to go ahead and quickly add in a cube object. Now I'm going to switch over to the modifier drop library. And here I just have a simple asset called array. And so I just want to show you how you know an asset might not be a mesh object or a collection or a material or anything like that. It may just be functionality that you're adding to an existing object. So here if we take this and drop it onto the cube, we can see that not only adds in the array modifier to our cube, but we have the properties. So we can, you know, quickly adjust information about that. And since it's been added with one of these scripted libraries, there's information added to this object that will allow us to then access those properties again. Now this in itself isn't really all that helpful. I mean, adding modifiers through the modifier panel is just as easy. But let's say that you have a whole modifier stack. So let's say that there's also a skin modifier, maybe a subdivision surface, and a wireframe modifier. 
So now we have this whole set of modifiers that are included. Let's say we want to save this back to our library. That way we can add this whole setup to different objects and other projects. So now we can go to the modifier drop interface and then save the current modifier stack to the library, which would then generate a preview. And again, let us to quickly add all that information to another scene later on. Now, for the most part, I want to focus my development on creating these parametric libraries that can be shipped with Blender. So I'm hoping to volunteer my time to help the core development team determine what changes are required in the Blender Python API to make developing these libraries possible. So depending on feedback from the community and what the core Blender development team thinks, hopefully I'll be able to create some more technical information to get these types of libraries included in 2.83 or maybe a later version, depending on what happens. But let me know what you think in the comments below. If this is something that interests you, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I'll be uploading more videos and information soon. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.